how to raise and maintain altars some of you by reason of this teaching and the prayers that will follow shortly you will rewrite the narratives of your families believe me when i tell you this that what they said has not been done it is with gallancy and victory you will do it that nobody in your family can rise and you have seen it happen now with this knowledge you will hold it like a key and clear those altars to give you room every man you see who has become a champion found a way to put those altars down everybody pastor listen this may be the key you've been looking for why is it that ministry does not work when the altars go down the result will speak you will see it and you will know that victory has come how to raise altars how to tear down altars how to maintain altars now please write today we do not raise altars by erecting physical structures or monuments today for the new believer in christ now we do not raise altars by erecting physical structures and monuments necessarily that means you don't have to go and stand somewhere and start carving things putting blocks together to look for no now that does not mean you cannot dedicate a place say for instance to meet with god like a prayer room or something no that's not what i'm we're not talking that is still scriptural that you can find a place to spend with god but that today we do not raise altars by erecting physical structures and monuments necessarily to know how to erect structures structures that work with power and grace we have to learn from one of the great patriarchs elijah first kings 18. we're going to learn how to erect altars from the man elijah let's start from verse 19 for sake of time this was at a, this was a point of decadence where the purposes of god had suffered a great deal under jezebel and ahab and now this great prophet of god arose called elisha elijah the tishbite and he's about to judge the prophets in the encounter that we know to be the encounter of fire at mount carmel let's read pay attention as we learn the lesson now therefore he said send and gather to me all israel unto mount carmel and the prophets of Baal, 450, and the prophets of the groves, 400, and so on and so forth. Next verse. So Ahab sent unto all the children of Israel, and they gathered the prophets, and they came to Mount Carmel. Follow closely now. Elijah came and all the people and said, How long will ye hold between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him not a word. Next verse. Elijah said unto the people, I even only, you see the mistake? This one is a mistake clearly he made as a prophet. He said, I only remain a prophet of the Lord, but Baal's prophets are 450 men, 23. Let them therefore, now watch this, he's building an altar now. Look at the ingredients or the requirements. Let them therefore give us two bullocks and let them choose one bullock for themselves and cut it into pieces and lay it on wood and put no fire under and i will dress the other bullock and lay it on wood and put no fire uh-huh and ye call upon the name of your god and i will call upon the name of the lord and the god that answered by fire let him be god and all the people answered and said it is well spoken both the prophets of Baal and Elijah knew that without altars, any other thing they were trying to do and call would be a total waste of time. 
Elijah said unto the prophet, he says, choose you for yourself and call upon the name of your God. Put no fire under. Uh -huh. And they took the bullock and then when they had put everything, they had dressed it, they now began to call, O Baal, hear us. But there was no voice, nor any that answered. And they leaped upon where? Look at the various skills they were doing, but it was on the altar which was made so they made an altar 26 or 27 now and it came to pass at noon that elijah mocked them and said cry aloud for he is a god either he is talking or he is pursuing or he is in a journey or peradventure he sleepeth and must be awaked 28 and they cried aloud and caught themselves after their manner did you see that that means there was a way they caught themselves as a last card that when they try everything on that altar and it does not work there is a skill they taught them that you can cut yourself and they tried it they lacerated themselves till blood gushed out upon them 29 and it came to pass when the midday was past and they prophesied until the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice there was neither voice nor any to answer nor any that regarded 30 verse 30 and elijah said unto the people come near unto me and all the people came near unto him step number one he repaired the altar of the lord that was broken down follow carefully we're looking at the protocol to be able to set up an altar. Something happened to have given Baal that kind of authority. And Elijah now, wanting to see the power of God, the first thing he did was to repair the altar of the Lord that was broken down. Reading to 39, let's hurry up, 31. And Elijah took 12 stones according to the number of the tribes of the sons of jacob unto whom the word of the lord came saying israel shall be thy name so he did not just gather stones carelessly the stones were according to the word of the lord and with the stones he built an altar in the name of the lord and he made a stretch about the altar as great as would contain two measures of seed 33 and he put the wood in order and cut the bullock in pieces and laid him on the wood and said fill four barrels with water and he poured it on the bond sacrifice and on the wood 34 and he said do it a second time and he did it a second time and he said do it the third time and they did it the third time uh-huh and the water ran about the altar and he filled the trench also with water 36 and it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that elijah the prophet came near and said lord god of abraham isaac and israel let it be known this day that thou art god in israel and that i am your servant and that i have done all these things at thy word 37 hear me O lord hear me that these people may know that thou art the Lord God and that thou hast turned their heart back again 38 then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the bond sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust and licked up the water that is in the strange and all when all the people saw it they fell on their faces and they said the Lord he is God the Lord, he is God. How to raise an altar? Pay attention. Number one, the Bible says, Elisha repaired, Elijah repaired the altar that was broken. Many people miss this step. In raising an altar, most people emphasize on other things and forget the place of repentance and brokenness please write it down that is what it means to repair the altar of the lord that has been broken 
you want to raise an altar that can authorize spiritual activities again it cannot be without repentance and brokenness please write it down can i tell you whether it is as an individual whether as a family whether as a territory you want to see the power of god come again you want to see the realm of the spirit work in partnership with the purposes of god over the lives of the saints it starts with genuine brokenness and repentance not confession not declaration not prophecy not giving repentance unfortunately and respectfully so most times even men of god when we are teaching people these things we do not teach them the place of repentance and brokenness is someone learning this is very 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 powerful genuine repentance and genuine brokenness remember what moses did as soon as the lord told him i mean um, moses when he told him about the judgment coming upon the people he began to plead for mercy even for them let me show you a scripture second samuel 24 we'll read verse 1 then we'll jump to verse 10 the bible says and again the anger of the lord was kindled against israel and he moved david against them to say go number israel and judah so he made a big mistake let's go to verse 10 and david's heart smote him after that he had numbered the people watch this now and david said unto the lord i have sinned greatly in that i have in that which i have done and now i beseech thee O lord take away the iniquity of thy servant for i have done very foolishly say repentance say brokenness we are reading please continue 11 now it says for when david was up in the morning the word of the lord came unto the prophet god david seer saying 20 verse 12 now go and say to david thus saith the lord i offer thee three things choose thee one of them that i may do it unto you that means god is saying i'm going to deal with you but i'm going to give you three options verse 13 number one god came to david and told him all of this punishment number one seven years of famine shall come upon thee in the land or will thou flee three months before your enemies while they pursue you or number or shall there be three days pestilence in the land now advise and see what answer i shall return to him that sent me so david these are the three punishments you are going to receive watch this now 14. david said unto god i am in a great strait let us fall now into the hand of the lord what a wise man for his mercies are great and let me not fall into the hand of man ah. you're not a man no you're not a man no. you're the god who opens doors no man can shut you're not a man no you're not a man the God of everything no David is saying I rather fall into the hands of my creator I know man these people will kill me without mercy please keep that scripture verse 15 so the Lord sent a pestilence upon Israel from the morning even to the time appointed and there died of the people from Dan, even to Beersheba, 70,000 men. Is that in your Bible? 70,000 men. 70,000 men. We're going to visit that later on when I talk about the other aspects. I'm just showing you that if you want to rebuild the altar of the Lord, it must first start with genuine repentance. Are we together? hallelujah number two the bible says he set up 12 stones set up 12 stones according to the 12 tribes of israel 
that talks of covenant and he says he did that according to the word God gave him so you can put in other words the second ingredient that was needed to rebuild that altar is the word of God the promises of God what did he say upon what guarantee are you standing the word of God the promises of God number one brokenness and repentance number two the word of God are you ready for number three there are many other ingredients that were there but that which is an interest to us number three is sacrifice and there are three levels of sacrifice sacrifice so there are three very important things components that were present upon that altar there are others like water and wood that talks about service and all of that but i'm not into all those ones now my concern is repentance and brokenness number two to return back to the place of value and honor to the word of god and then number three to engage the power of sacrifice and i said there are three levels watch this now the first sacrifice that must be put upon the altar is you romans 12 and verse 1 until you become that living sacrifice i beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of god that ye present your bodies is that in your bible a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto god which is your reasonable act of worship where do you present it on that altar jesus was teaching and he says when you are going to give your offering and you find out you've offended your brother he says leave it at the altar so that's where you were taking it to you must become that sacrifice yourself everything about you and everything about your life please look up i'm showing you how to rebuild altars and it also doubles as how to tear down altars if our fathers worship idols if our grandfathers if our territories worship idols it's not enough to just return to the lord territorially you as a person must come and say i make a conscious decision my life and everything belongs to you the second sacrifice that God demands from us in building altars is our praise and our worship. Our praise and our worship. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 15. Hebrews 13 and 15. It says, by him therefore let us offer the sacrifice of praise unto God continually that is the fruit of our lips giving thanks to his name you want to rebuild an altar that restores all things the sacrifice of praise and the sacrifice of worship no wonder paul and silas were wise people they didn't sing because they were musicians it was a mystery they didn't care who was listening to them they didn't care about their vocal competence all they were doing was to sing and they created a portal from that prison that touched the heavens and God came down in response do you not notice that this was a formula that was given the nation of Israel every time they were fighting a battle and it looked like defeat was imminent they would keep their swords and begin to sing you are good and your mercies endure forever is it in your bible they keep singing it and chanting it and you will see god move like a mighty warrior and begin to bring confusion in the camp of the enemy your worship the third sacrifice is your prayers this is a major sacrifice that must always be on your altar leviticus chapter 6 and verse 13 the ministry of prayer like sacrifice upon the altar it says the fire shall ever be burning upon the altar it shall not go out prayer 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 
when you see those who practice divination and wizardry and all of that they are always there making enchantments and making sure that these altars are serviced by sacrifices of prayers to all kinds of deities the sacrifice of yourself your life the sacrifice of your worship and praise the sacrifice of prayers and then the sacrifice of a seed giving and i'm going to teach you how to use this because many people do not know many people just drop money and i i i i, I submit to you that sometimes even we men of god maybe because it's money just because you are bringing money and dropping it does not mean that you are dropping a seed and a sacrifice i don't care how much there is a consciousness and there is an understanding that must support what you are doing because seeds have different voices in the realm of the spirit are we together to rebuild an altar number one that altar must be repaired talks of repentance and brokenness number two restoration of the word of the lord the promises of god you must get back to live by the word of god not to live by the ordinances of tradition not to live over some kind of um, demonic template number three the sacrifice of yourself the sacrifice of your worship the sacrifice of your prayers the sacrifice of your seed and then the final key to raising an altar is prophetic decrees and blessings prophetic decrees and blessings now we're going to finish up we're going to finish up um Give us 1 Kings 18.33, then we'll finish up 2 Samuel. We're about to pray now. Something is going to happen in this place now. 1 Kings 18.33. He said, put the wood in order and then cut the bullock into pieces on the wood and fill the barrels with water and pour it upon the burnt offering. His sacrifice was in place first before he called upon the God of heaven. This is the same thing that happened when Solomon was dedicating the temple also. There was an altar, there was already sacrifice upon it. And then he began to pray and call upon the God of heaven and bless the people. And the cloud of his presence came and filled that place. Second Samuel 24. Let's continue from where we stopped. I think it was from verse, we were at verse 15. Let's finish it now. This is David. So the Lord sent a pestilence upon Israel from morning even to the time appointed. And there, dried, there died the people from Dan to Beersheba, 70,000 men. Uh -huh. And when the angel stretched out his hand upon Jerusalem to destroy it, the Lord repented him of the evil and said unto the angel that destroyed the people, it is enough. Stay now thy hand. And the angel of the Lord was at the threshing place of Arauna, the Jebusite. Uh -huh. Watch this carefully now. And David spake unto the Lord when he saw the angel that smote the people and said, Lo, I have sinned and I have done wickedly. But this sheep, what have they done? What a good leader. Let thy hand, I pray thee, be against me and against my father's house in other words spare these innocent people because of my wrong i have given access and seventy thousand people have died 18. and prophet god came that day to david and said unto him go up rear an altar i want to show you a mystery right now something has authorized satan to destroy this and even though you have confessed and repented that is not enough he said, go up, rear an altar unto the Lord in the threshing floor of Arauna, the Jebusite. 19. So David did according to the saying of God and went up as the Lord commanded. Uh -huh. We're reading to 25. And Arauna looked and saw the king and his servants coming towards him. And Arauna went out and bowed himself before the king on his face to the ground. Next verse. 
and Arauna said wherefore is my lord the king come to his servant and David said to buy the threshing floor of thee to build an altar unto the Lord that the plague may be stayed that the cause may be stayed that the patterns may be stayed that the reoccurrences may be stayed from the people 22 and Arauna said unto David let my lord the king take and offer up what seemed good unto him behold here is even oxen for you and here are threshing instruments you know what the guy said i have come to you dear king i respect you i mean it's an honor for you to come you don't need to do anything take the threshing floor take a bullock and even take all the instruments 23 all these things did around her as the king give unto the king and Arauna said unto the king, The Lord thy God accept thee. 24. Watch this. And the king said unto Arauna, Nay, but I will surely buy it of thee at a price. Neither will I offer burnt offerings unto the Lord my God of that which does not cost me nothing. So David bought the threshing floor and the oxen for 50 shekels of silver. 25. And David built there an altar unto the Lord and offered burnt offerings of peace and peace offerings. So the Lord was entreated for the land and the plague was stayed from Israel. Please look up. Let me tell you the truth. You can live on earth and fail woefully. Give your life to Christ and in the sweet by and by go to heaven but as far as dominion and authority upon the earth is concerned you will never be able to excel without an altar genesis chapter 8 let me show you something you may have read but not understood verse 20 we're about to pray 8 20 noah built an altar please look up as soon as Noah came out, there was no place of Noah rejoicing and saying, Ah, thank God, I survived the flood. As soon as he came out, the first thing he did was to build an altar unto the Lord. And he took of every clean beast, watch this, and of every clean fowl, and offered burnt offering on the altar, 21. And the Lord smelled a sweet savor. And the Lord made a proclamation by reason of that. I will not again curse the ground for man's sake. For the imagination of his heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smite any more everything that is living as I have done. Now, look up please. He said, verse 22, while the earth remains. Do you know what he's saying? seed time and harvest cold and heat summer and winter day and night shall not cease to them that understand the altar the basis for his speaking was over the man who had raised an altar and he's teaching here that all of these prophetic manifestations revolve around the understanding of an altar the power to restrain evil is captured in the understanding of this system of altars. This is very, very powerful. Many preachers do not know this. And the only thing you just do is to get up and say, God called me, God bless you. You start a church and find out nothing is happening. Many business people especially those who come from families where nothing is happening let me tell you the truth whatever you see that is not working right in your life your family your territory the first thing is not to go around understanding the names of demons and all of that that may not be necessary the most important thing is for you to know that there is a principal altar that has powered all the causes all of these infirmities all of these demonic things and it is called the altar of sin and iniquity are we together your first assignment 
in tearing down altars is to rebuild an altar to the Lord over that family. You don't do it by a physical monument. It is an understanding and a spiritual approach. I told you that an altar can also be a non-material platform. Lord, I stand this day and in the name of Jesus Christ, on this day, I am standing to repent on behalf of my family, on behalf of all of this. Do you know that was what Job kept doing for his children? Read your Bible. That was why Satan came, even though they were wayward children. He offered sacrifices and built an altar for them. And nothing could touch them except when God gave Satan permission. Satan himself returned and said, when I went, I met a man fortified by the understanding of an altar and I could not do anything. I have seen ordinary people rise to supernatural levels and dimensions because they understood the power of altars. Preachers, individuals, there are families that have decided, for instance, to set up an altar, an altar of prayer, to say, Lord, we agree as a family that we are going to pray. And by reason of that, they now authorize supernatural encounters that keep coming. There are people who have set up all kinds of prophetic altars. But listen to me, the protocol one more time, to tear down any altar, including the altar that has seemed to destroy everything around your family and lineage. Believe me when I tell you, just assuming it is gone because you are born again. Personal salvation is not the same as territorial salvation. There are rules of engagement. Are we together? There must be genuine repentance. I'm saying that because that is what we are going to do this night now genuine repentance for yourself and for everybody who is around your covering and then when that happens the next thing is a committal to live by the word of God to live by the word of God not to live by superstition not to run from church and then run to another herbalist and say what is this and uh 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 commit out to live by the word of God and then number three the sacrifice of your own life that you will live your life for his purposes the sacrifice of your praise and your worship and then the sacrifice of a seed let me talk for a minute about this seed don't be uncomfortable because I'm talking about it let me tell you the truth there have been all kinds of givings in the body of Christ and I salute and I respect it. I want to tell you why many people's giving has not produced any results. Sincerely, and I say this with due honor to the body of Christ, number one, most givings have simply been out of sympathy and whipping out emotions. So most of the givings have come like donations and there is a place for that. Are we together now? Yes. There are all kinds of seeds in the realm of the spirit and you can use your sacrifice to perfect the process of erecting an altar that stands against anything that comes to destroy you. So, apostle, we are experiencing untimely death in our family. Every year and every month, and every two, two years, someone must seem to die. Let me assure you, if all you do is just get up and carry a seed and come and drop, nothing will change. I will not lie to you. It's not all about money. It's about knowing that there is a principal altar that powers that. The altar of sin and iniquity. So it starts with repentance. Whatever has given Satan legal grounds to plague this family, we come by the blood of the Lamb, by that blood of the eternal covenant, and we plead mercy. Now that is step one. And then to choose that we will walk in the ways of the Lord. And then when you do that, through your time of prayer, 
Now your seed can walk. Let me tell you how to make your seed bruise the head of the serpent. It's not just about money or something that costs you. There is a revelation, please look up, that is behind what you do. That means you are making a sacrifice. Number one, as proof that you love God. Number two, as proof that you trust God. Number three, as a spiritual ordinance mandated by the wisdom of God. Whether you go to Satan or you go to God, there are major problems in your life. Look at me, Nigeria. Look at me, dear people. I can tell you this. Many unbelievers understand this mystery. That is why as you are shouting and saying, God forbid, this man can never become my boss in the office. He's looking at you with pity because they know where that authorization comes from. They know that it does not come from the office. And they go and consult mediums and the mediums will tell them pledge that when you get there, you will come back, you will serve the purposes of whatever. And out of desperation, yes. Pledge that your children will serve me. Yes, sir. Pledge that your children, just give me that office. Yes, sir. Okay, we'll make incisions as a, as a, as a testament. Let blood be on the altar. Let the God see it. Okay, if you like, tear my whole body. Let me just get that thing. And they don't know what they are doing. Afterwards, depending on what they are asking for, they can say there is one person in your family you are going to have to donate either your wife or your child or your children or somebody <sighs> do you really need this office yes sir are you willing to do it yes sir and you find out that after that sacrifice no matter what else is done inevitably in a way you cannot explain that which they desire comes when God wanted to redeem man, he would have easily sent Angel Gabriel. Angel Gabriel is very faithful. He would have died and nothing would have happened. Or he would have sent Michael. Or he would have even sent two-thirds of the angels to come and die. At least two-thirds of the angels would be more than the, one angel died per, per person. He would have sent one angel to die per person. And he looked and there was that meeting. And he himself, knowing the laws he has put, he now said it has to be God that dies. And he took his only son. God carried his only son. What else in heaven is more expensive than Jesus? Mention one thing you know. Is it the throne? Is it the angels put together? In the beginning was the word. And he literally carried the word and sent him down to the earth. When Jesus was crying, Eloi, Eloi, Lamakta. Do you know why no power can fight salvation? Find out the sacrifice that went to make it happen. The only way salvation can be destroyed if there is a higher and greater sacrifice, greater than Jesus, that is sacrificed. Are we together? You get what I'm saying now? Yeah. He carried his most precious and hung it upon that cross and stamped redemption eternally for men. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you the truth. When I saw certain things in my own life and I saw certain things across our territories, almost every territory, if we are to be sincere, there, there is a backlog of territorial limitations. Some of them, the things that I have mentioned, and it would take spiritual understanding to make up your mind and deal with these things once and for all. You can shout amen, you can fast, you can pray. Those are just portions and pieces of the truth until this is engaged with understanding. I have done this for my life. I have done this for this ministry. You cannot imagine the sacrifice that has gone in to see Jesus glorified in this ministry as you see it. Nothing is just happening by mistake. No, sir. If you ever think it's by mistake, think again. Right now, that is the political season. Shrines all over this nation 
are full of men and women who are clamoring for they know that it's not just to stand and vote believers the mystery of the altar is the mystery of dominion it cannot be outside of the altar the Lord God of heaven sits upon that altar that guarantees our salvation there are many of you right now you came here tonight trusting God to end circles of infirmities circles and yokes can I tell you if you are the one who goes through this for your family so that no one else goes through it happy are you and God bless you for it I made up my mind as a person that listen no matter what it would take it would take let me be that bridge between the old and the new someone is in this place tonight and you came to church to make that decision I know some of you know what you suffered by reason of the background some of you now as it is even though you are Christians you are still going through it the worst you can do is to hand over this disaster to your children it is time to stand as a priest that you are and take advantage of the resources of wisdom including the understanding of the altar and to obtain grace to establish victory otherwise don't say my father was sick as soon as he was 50 years they just diagnosed him with something and he said it happened to his father too don't let the devil deceive you and say i am just 30 years 30 is 50 minus 15 it means you are also coming that everything that does not work and it continues and remains so they are powered by altars it's time to deal with it is someone ready tonight the first thing we are going to do right now please listen no distraction please don't allow the devil distract you we are working with time in the next two or three minutes you are going to cry a, we are going to do a corporate prayer of repentance before God don't be too proud oh you are going to cry before the God of it you don't have to lie down or whatever whatever position is comfortable not as an act of condemnation genuinely before the God of heaven and say Lord I am standing in repentance if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways some of you need to pray on behalf of your children on behalf of your husband on behalf of your wife lord i take the responsibility of priesthood there are men of god who need to stand on behalf of their congregations there are business ceos that need to stand on behalf of their corporations lord we plead mercy over every altar of sin and iniquity that is empowering every other negative altar death delays retrogression stagnation please pray god is giving you a chance